Hi, third graders. I am Mrs. Longstreth, and I'm a literacy coach for East Lansing Public Schools. Today, I'm going to be teaching you a lesson about main idea in detail. At the end of this lesson, I will be sharing your learning activity with you. The main idea of a, of a text is the, what that text is mostly about. And here are some ways that you can find the main idea when you're reading a text. You can read the title or heading. You can look at the pictures. You can look for keywords, ideas, and phrases that are repeated. Or you can think about what the text is mostly about. Details describe or explain the main idea. And here are some examples of what details might include. Examples, facts, steps, definitions, reasons, descriptions, comparisons, or contrasts. Today I'm going to be reading you a portion of the text, Up a Rainforest Tree. And this text is written by Carol Telford and Rod Theodorin. As we read this portion of this text, be thinking about what are the main ideas of the sections and what are some details that support those main ideas. Up a rainforest tree. Introduction. You are about to go on an amazing journey. You are going to travel to one of the most special places in the world, the Amazon rainforest. This is home to one-fifth of all species of plants and half of all species of birds in the world. You will cross the dark, gloomy floor of the forest and then travel up the mighty trunk of a rainforest tree. You will discover how each part of the tree is home to different kinds of plants and animals. Each animal has its own special way to move, feed, and breed in this amazing world of trees. Tropical rainforests grow in areas of the world that are hot and have lots of rain. The Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world. It covers an area about two-thirds the size of the United States. It is also one of the wettest areas in the world. Two-thirds of the Earth's fresh water can be found here. There are no seasons. It is always very hot and very wet. This caption for this picture says, Thousands of species of trees, plants, and animals live in this rich habitat, which is as hot and humid as a greenhouse. The caption for this map says, The Amazon rainforest grows around the mighty Amazon River in South America. And you can see that the red part in the key is the Amazon rainforest, and the yellow part are other rainforests. Here's a journey map. So this is a diagram showing all of the levels of the rainforest. And we're gonna be starting at the bottom here at the forest floor. And then it moves up to the understory, which it says is 30 feet. Then we have the canopy and the emergent layer. All right, the section I'm going to be reading first is on the forest floor. We are walking through the rainforest. The air is full of the call of birds and the buzz of insects. The air is humid, like in a hot, steamy shower. Even though it is daytime, it is quite dark. High above us, the thick canopy of leaves blocks out nearly all the sunlight. It is too dark for grass to grow. Instead, the ground under our feet is thick with twigs and dead leaves that have fallen from above. Many types of fungi grow here, helping to rot the leaf litter. The rotting leaves release nutrients, which trees and plants take up into their roots and help them grow. Fungi and rotting leaf litter provide food for thousands of tiny creatures like beetles, ants, and wood lice. The labels here indicate different animals and plants that live on the forest floor. Rhinoceros beetle, crab spider, millipede, fungi, seedling, centipede, leaf cutter ants, army ants. Ant bird. This small forest bird has a special way of feeding. 
Army ants travel across the forest floor in columns, attacking insects and small animals. The ant bird flies just ahead of the column and snaps up insects as they try to escape the hungry ants. Six-banded armadillo. The armadillo uses its strong claws to make a burrow to live in or to dig for tasty worms and insects. Although it is covered in strong bony plates, it can curl up in a ball if attacked. Rhinoceros beetle. These beetles are huge, as long as an adult's hand. Rhinoceros beetles are sometimes called Hercules beetles. The male uses his amazing horns to wrestle another male, trying to throw him over onto his back. So I'm going to let you see some of these diagrams. Here's an illustration of some of the plants and animals that live in the rainforest. And here's some of the close-ups of these. Here's the ant bird, the six-banded armadillo, and that rhinoceros beetle. All right, so when we're thinking about main idea in detail, sometimes it can help to use something called a graphic organizer. And I just made mine myself on a blank piece of paper. Looks like that. So I made a larger spot at the top for the main idea, and then I made four other smaller boxes for the details. You can make something like this too, or you could just write out on a piece of paper what the main idea is, and leave a spot, a space for four details, okay? Um, when, you, when I read the next section of the book to you, I want you to be thinking about the main idea and the details. I wanna show you an example though for the section we just read about the forest floor. So in this section, I had to think about what's the main idea of this chapter on the forest floor. And remember that the main idea is what the text is mostly about. And here were some of the ways to think about how to find that main idea. So I read the title, which was on the forest floor, and I looked at the pictures. We read the text together, I looked for some key words and phrases, and I thought about what is that text mostly about. And what I wrote in my graphic organizer for main idea is that the main idea is the specific environment, plants, and animals that can be found on the forest floor of the rainforest. And then I just wrote that in the top box. And then I needed to find four details that supported that main idea. And remember, details uh, describe or explain the main idea. And those could be examples, facts, steps, definitions, reasons, descriptions, comparisons, or contrasts. So I was looking for some of the details in the text, but also in some of the graphic features like the pictures and illustrations and captions. So here are the four details that I chose. It is dark even in the daytime because the thick canopy of leaves above blocks the sunlight. The air is humid like in a hot, steamy shower. Rotting leaf litter gives off nutrients with trees and plants used to help them grow. Three animals that live on the forest floor are the ant bird, the six-banded armadillo, and the rhinoceros beetle. Now there are many more details in that chapter than we included here, but today your, your assignment or activity is just to find four details that support the main idea. And then you can write them in a graphic organizer that looks something like this, or just on a blank piece of paper and share them with your teacher. So for you to be able to do this, I'm going to read you the section on the understory, which is the next chapter in this book. And remember at the end of this video, you're going to be sharing the main idea in four details with your teacher in the way that he or she asked you to. Okay, so here's the section on the understory and be listening for the main idea and some details that support it. Now we are climbing. The understory is the dark, gloomy area below the tree canopy. Because of the thick ceiling of trees, hardly any wind can blow down here. It is very still and humid. We are surrounded by ferns, palms, vines, and creepers dripping with moisture. They can live here because they do not need much light. Among the shadows and splashes of color, we spot lizards scurrying about searching for food. 
a spotted oslet come, climbs slowly by a creeper looking for roosting birds. Young saplings grow in the gloomy understory toward the light. Lianas. Lianas are climbing plants called vines that grow up other plants and trees. Many animals use these vines like ropes or bridges to travel around the forest. Tarantulas. These huge spiders can grow as much as 10 inches across. They use their huge poisonous fangs to catch other spiders, insects, frogs, and small lizards. Tarantulas are also called bird-eating spiders, but they only hunt small roosting birds or chicks. Hotsin. This strange bird nests in trees beside rivers in the rainforest. Baby Hotsins have claws on their wings to help them hold on to the nest and twigs. Hotsins eat leaves, which rot in their stomachs, giving off a disgusting, musky smell. So here's a picture of the young saplings growing. And here are a picture of the lianas, the climbing vines, a tarantula, and the Hotsin bird. All right, now, either create a graphic organizer like this on a blank paper, or maybe just type up what the main idea is in four details. That is your activity for today. Please be sure to share your work with your teacher in the manner that they have asked for on your learning menu for this week. Thank you for being such great learners today.